Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining my presentation. I'm Alex Kwan, and today I'll be presenting on online portfolio selection and specifically uh, pattern matching strategies. First of all, for introductions, I'm currently a researcher at Hudson and Dames Kwan Fitted Research. Uh, the two co-founders of the research group are actually also presenting today, so make sure to keep an eye out on that. Um, this summer, I'll be interning at Marshall Waste on their quantitative training team, and I'll finish my studies in computer science this year at the University of California, Berkeley. And um, without further ado, I will now dive into the presentation. So what exactly is online portfolio selection? Uh, we can broadly divide the definition into two parts, portfolio selection and online learning. So portfolio selection is a sequential allocation among a set of assets to maximize the final return of investment. Um, every day, a portfolio manager is given a task to decide the allocation of capital, and we formulate the problem so that the weights and the daily returns can be represented in a vector format. The product of the two will represent the daily returns of the strategy. The second part of the subject is online learning. Uh, which utilizes compute computationally efficient algorithms to handle large-scale applications. Uh, you could have the best strategy in the world that predicts the stock market movements 100% of the time, but um, if your strategy doesn't, you know, if it takes one day to run, uh, you would not be able to capture the opportunity presented by the situation. Um, it is imperative that these update algorithms can be done in a set amount of time, and preferably a, a quick one to that. Um, this would actually expand the application of this selection algorithm to not only a daily or weekly time frame, but to something that can be applied to even intraday or mid-frequency setting as well. It is also noteworthy to understand that traditional theories for portfolio selection, such as uh, Markowitz's portfolio theory, optimize the balance between the portfolio's risk and returns. However, online portfolio selection is founded on the capital growth theory uh, which solely focuses on maximizing the returns of the current portfolio. Because the capital growth theory uh, primarily relies on the Kelly criterion, um, traditional metrics such as sharp ratios, uh, maximum drawdowns are more so less useful. Uh, the primary metric in this situation becomes the, the log of final wealth, which in turn indicates the maximum of final wealth. Before we dive into the, the pattern matching algorithms, uh, we will go over a brief overview of the general strategies of online portfolio selection. Uh, we will not touch base on all the subjects as uh, the primary goal for today's presentation is introducing the uh, newest developments in pattern matching. Um, and broadly speaking, uh, online portfolio selection can be divided into four categories, benchmarks, momentum, uh, mean reversion, and pattern matching. Momentum and mean inversion both definitely have been popular uh, quantitative strategies in recent decades as price trends have its strengths in different periods. And before we go into uh, specific strategies, let's take a look at the benchmarks. The benchmarks uh, purely exist as a comparison for existing strategies. Uh, first benchmark is the buy and hold algorithm where a portfolio manager purchases a set of stocks and never rebalances them. And although the manager does not change its allocation on each asset because of the underlying assets change in prices, the portfolio weights change on a daily basis. Uh, the second benchmark is best stock, where the strategy chooses the best performing stock in hindsight. Um, this incorporates future information into the strategy, but it can be set as a regret bound um, to compare it to a portfolio strategy. Next is the constant rebalance portfolio, where a portfolio rebalances to a um, certain preset weights um, every period. In a way, CRP performs almost like a uh, passive mean reversion as it shifts weights from the better performing assets to the less performing ones. Um, lastly is the best constant balance for real, one that takes the form of the best CRP in hindsight. Uh, this also includes future information into the strategy, so any note here should be taken with a grain of salt. There are plenty of other interesting momentum and mean reversion strategies that I will not dive into today, but all of these implementations are available in our ML FinLab's newest online portfolio selection uh, module. Um, so now let's uh, move on to pattern matching then. So pattern matching locates similarly acting historical market windows and make future predictions based on the, the similarity. Um, in fact, the hardest part of pattern matching is to 
effectively locate these um, so-called similar windows. Uh, traditional approaches have included pairwise movement tracking, um, Euclidean distance calculation, but as we'll find out, there actually has been much more success with the corn strategies. And these corn was pioneered by um, Lee, Boy, and Gopal Krishnan about a decade ago, and proved to have noteworthy results. To understanding using a correlation as a metric, we will look at the graph on the right side. Um, on the left side of the graph, we will see six relative price movements. The three increasing ones are labeled with the one at the end, and um, the three decreasing ones are indicated with the two. On the right side, we see a predicted market window that increases from 1.1 to 1.2. Uh, if we use, let's say, um, Euclidean distance as a metric for similarity, the prediction will only consider B1 and B2 as a possible similar set. However, there is a huge problem here as uh, B2 represents the total opposite direction. To prevent this from happening, we use the Pearson correlation between the two different market windows. Um, and using correlation, the strategy can identify rising price movements. Uh, Corn strategies in particular look at the windows and see if the correlation is above a certain threshold. If the numbers are above a certain value, we add the corresponding historical movements to our set and optimize our portfolio weights to maximize returns for the periods contained in the similar sets. However, we actually notice uh, one significant problem with this approach as the problem closely resembles an experiment that is geared towards um, hyperparameter tunings. Uh, to prevent our models from overfitting and to represent a more robust strategy, we introduce an ensemble approach to mediate these concerns. One approach to an ensemble of strategy is Thomas Covers' uh, universal portfolio. Cover introduced the idea of universal portfolio that a weighted average of all possible CRP weights closely replicates the best constant rebalance portfolio. Introducing this idea to one that fits our model more, we introduce the top key experts algorithm that chooses portfolio weights based on each expert's performance. In this case, uh, each expert is defined as an independent portfolio with predetermined parameters. Um, the next period's total weights are based on the previous period's K best performing experts. Through this method, we can reduce our overfitting and make our models more robust. In an ideal setting, of course, uh, we would generate an infinite number of experts that are able to cover all possible parameters, uh, but due to computational limitations, it really is impossible for us to do such a computationally intensive task. Um, so we just limit all parameter values to a set range that is more efficient in writing. First, we'll take a look at the correlation-driven non-parametric learning K. Uh, this given graph represents a 3D representation of the returns plotted against the three hyperparameters, uh, window, row, and K. Uh, the darker colors indicate higher returns with lighter colors representing lower returns. From the first look, we can actually notice that the strategy is strongly dependent on a lower value of K, which indicates that only you know, a certain number of strategies ends up being profitable or useful for the given ensemble. Uh, we also see a general dependency with the high value of row um, corresponding to higher returns. The high returns for um, this particular data set's corn case strategy stems from a window value of one and row of three, which indicates a linearly distributed correlation threshold of zero, one third, and two thirds. Uh, we can actually further improve uh, this correlation with the introduction of a concept called market symmetry. So the symmetric and functional corn K um, were actually introduced recently in a journal of financial data science paper by Yang Wang and Dong Wang in 2020. Um, market symmetry represents a simple concept where the market mirrors price movements. Um, that is, an increasing pattern represents a mirror of a decreasing pattern. Uh, this gives us an intuitional understanding that if the price movements are strongly negatively correlated, the optimum portfolio weights should minimize the returns or the losses from those periods. That is, it is most likely that the uh, optimal portfolio weights would be the inverse. The original corn problem um, has a formulation where it identifies all periods that are above a certain threshold for correlation. In other words, any period that is below the threshold has a constant of zero, uh, whereas any period that is above the threshold has a constant of one. For the given graph on the left, um, 
we can now represent the corner strategies with a certain activation function, each corresponding to the same threshold of an arbitrary set value of 0 0.8. Um, this is in line with our original problem formulation. So on the right, we see the symmetric corn or scorn, um, which is a piecewise function where any value below the negative of our threshold will have a multiple of negative one and plus one for the positive threshold. Um, so this allows both the positive and the negative correlation information to be fully integrated with the, uh, our optimal portfolio weights. Uh, intuitively, we can actually understand it as maximizing returns over periods that are similarly correlated and minimizing the losses over periods that are inversely correlated. So for this particular NICE data set, uh, we see optimal parameters with windows of two and three, which are longer than the ones with the simple corn algorithm. For the row values, however, it is interesting to see that the parameter tuning identified a value close to zero as the optimum. Um, so this indicates a binary classification almost where all historical periods are divided into two, um, one that is correlated and one that is not. Uh, for the corresponding scoring K gra graph on the right, um, we see that the darker colors are associated with a higher window value of three compared to one that was displayed in corn K. Although the optimal window value might have changed, the best K value is still K of one. Similarly to the corn algorithm, a window range of three and row range of three represented good parameter choices. So the symmetric corn algorithm provides an improvement from the original corn, but there are actually methods to improve it by placing a different set of weights for each period. Um, the activation function for the scorn was a piecewise function, and we can actually replace this with a, you know, a smoother sigmoid function. And by replacing with such a variable, uh, it is possible for us to place different importance on the correlated periods. One that has higher correlation will have higher weights importance, um, whereas ones that are less correlated will have less importance on it. It is not too surprising from the parameter tuning of the functional corn K that the optimal row value is much higher than the previous scorn or corn. The row values are in the range of 0.8, which represent a high correlation, and the left parameter, which is lambda, represents a scale factor to state how smooth the activation, activation function should be. So um, next up are the results of strategies on different data sets previously used by scholars. Uh, this particular data set is a two-year range of the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average from 2001 to 2003, where there was a consistent downturn in the whole market. Here, we actually identified the benchmark strategies of buy and hold in CRP uh, underperforming the whole market in general. In fact, the returns are lower than what the portfolio started with for the benchmarks. Um, however, the corn algorithms have a much higher return compared to the benchmarks presented here. Uh, score K in particular significantly outperforms the rest with a relative return close to two. This is an impressive result considering that our formulation was based on a uh, long only strategy in a bear market environment. Now, you may think that the results are tuned to represent the best results. Um, that could be the case, but in general, there are other analysis of different data sets available in the research repo for Hudson and Thames. Um, window range of three and a um, row range of three. Um, along with a low K value one or two consistently returned high results. Uh, this can be interpreted as creating um, nine sub portfolio managers with different parameters and choosing the uh, best and second best manager to manage your overall portfolio. Um, I guess, but however, one concern about data set might be the time frame of the graph. This data was collected by Borodin in his earlier paper about exponential gradient and momentum and might not represent the, the current market conditions that we're more interested in. Uh, in response to a more traditional data set, I decided to collect a set of 44 stocks that were considered the highest market cap in 2011. Um, this data set had minimal look ahead bias as I only wrote three stocks from the original list, uh, which were removed due to mergers and acquisitions. So we actually see uh, really interesting results with this graph as the portfolio has extreme fluctuations from time to time. Um, this is represented of a capital growth portfolio. Maximum drawdown and chart ratios do not really mean much in this context as the sole goal for these algorithms is to maximize returns, not to uh, minimize the risk. 
it is actually interesting that these algorithms and data sets include the recent drawdown caused by COVID-19, uh, although f corn k and s corn k significantly outpaced the uh, other strategies during this period. Um, in March, we actually see the dip from a value of 12 to around 7, uh, but we also see it quickly rebound back to 9. Uh, the parameters used for this experiment were also similar to the one that I used for the previous Dow Jones data. Uh, in general, it is extremely easy to go through these algorithms as they are all implemented in our ML Finland library. Uh, we actually implemented um, a huge selection of online portfolio selection algorithms that is very intuitive to use. A simple allocate method allows users to quickly test out their strategy in response to their hypothesis. Um, Currently, we only support a long only portfolio, and it is difficult to use this strategy for an asset class that does not have uh, extended data, for, let's say. Uh, for example, the popular Facebook stock only has history going back to 2012, so it'll be difficult for us to use uh, these strategies with dates that go beyond that. So through this presentation, I hope to have introduced a new portfolio selection method um, that is easy to implement and utilize. Uh, these results, however, do have a lot of underlying assumptions. Especially, uh, these models do not account for transaction costs. Um, the daily rebalancing of portfolio is bound to you know, incur numerous transaction costs, and the lack of incorporation does account as a cautionary approach to the problem. Moreover, we assume that the managers can pur purchase the stocks exactly at closing price with minimal market impact. Um, all these assumptions might lead to a conclusion that this selection algorithm will be difficult to use, uh, but more analysis of each uh, regime and market microstructure is needed um, to fully implement this strategy in a uh, real trading environment. However, I do hope that these uh, techniques pioneered by numerous scholars are able to get more traction with the implementations that are available in our GitHub. Uh, more detailed notebooks about the strategies and results are available in our blog posts at Hudson and Dames and Research Repo as well. And that concludes the presentation. Um, and thank you for listening.